SpaceX Starlink alternatives. Kind of, sort of. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we're coming to the end of a little bit of focus. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about alternatives to SpaceX Starlink. There's a lot of people that are saying, ah, I don't really want to go with Starlink. It's a little bit too expensive right now. What are the alternatives? And that's what we're going to get into today. There's a few, and I'm kind of going to weigh them a little bit to Starlink by the end of this video. And hopefully it provides you some information about what you can look at for your specific needs. Now, before I get deep into this video, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, right down here, there's a little thank you button. You can click that. If not, it's okay too. consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And of course, if you're here for just Starlink coverage and not the tech or the photo or the video, I have a Starlink playlist right around here with about 120 to 130 videos of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And as I always say, why? Because this channel is all about the why. So let's dig right into it. If you don't know, SpaceX Starlink is a internet service provider that uses satellites that are in LEO or low Earth orbit. And there's a couple of other companies that are trying to capitalize on this right now. One is OneWeb and the other is Amazon's Project Keeper. They're both trying to compete with Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink. Can they do it? Now, those are two alternatives, but of course there is 5G if you have it available in your area. Now let's start out with OneWeb. And I was reading a couple of articles about OneWeb as well as Amazon's Project Keeper. So we get an idea of what's going on as of right now. The BBC reported this. UK-based OneWeb is one launch away from having enough satellites in orbit to cover the entire expanse of the Earth. Once ready, Elon Musk Starlink won't be the only company offering such a service. Very interesting. They continue by saying both OneWeb and Starlink use constellations of satellites in low Earth orbit or LEO instead of the conventional geostationary orbit or geo satellites. The lower altitude of LEO satellites helps in reducing latency or the delay that data takes to make a round trip over a network. Lower latency means a more responsive internet connection, smoother video calls, and hassle-free collaboration. However, this is where similarities between the companies end. Unlike Starlink, which is trying to woo individual customers to its service, OneWeb is tapping into existing telecom providers who are looking to supplement or expand their networks. The company, which only began service in May last year, had $800 million in backlog bookings by December. The satellites it sent up last year are expected to go online by May of this year and provide service to 48 states in the U.S. as well as northern Mediterranean regions. OneWeb has said, with a constellation size of less than 1,000 satellites, it's poised to take on Starlink. The era of satellite-based internet has now truly begun. Now, the next alternative is Amazon's Project Keeper. I've talked to you guys about this in the past, and it's getting close to being ready, let's call it. Now, I was reading an article over on Gizmodo, and it kind of sums things up. Amazon wants to build a constellation of 3,236 satellites in low Earth orbit that would deliver broadband internet service to disadvantaged users around the world. That sounds very similar to what Elon said when he first started SpaceX Starlink, right? Servicing the disadvantaged, bridging that digital divide, the digital divide of the haves and have nots, the have of high speed internet access and the have nots of high speed internet access. They're basically saying the same thing here. The effort is called Project Keeper, and it's promising cable-like speed with very little latency. Amazon said in a press release that users can install one of three antenna options in order to connect with Project Keeper satellites, none of which have been launched yet. 
The terminals, satellites, and ground terminals will be powered by Amazon design chip called Prometheus. That will allow each satellite to process one terabyte per second of data. The three terminal designs are like this. Maybe I'll pull up some pictures so you can see them. The first one is an 11 inch design or 28 centimeters square design for home or business use. And it is said that it will deliver up to 400 megabits per second down speed for less than $400. The second antenna is a smaller antenna, which is seven by seven inches or 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters centimeters and this is a compact design that project keeper calls the most affordable customer terminal according to amazon's press release and will offer up to 100 megabits down speed that's pretty good a seven inch by seven inch that is tiny that will be able to download at 100 megabits per second that's sweet. I like that. Now, they have one bigger dish that I would say it's very similar to SpaceX Starlink's dish, their commercial dish or their business class dish that is more square in size. That's around 20 or 22 inches by 22 inches, right around thereabouts. They have one that is 19 inches by 30 inches. That is pretty massive, or 48 centimeters by 76 centimeters, designed that will serve government, telecommunication, and enterprise applications, and reach speeds of one gigabit per second download speed. Pricing for this model has not been announced. Now that's very impressive. One gigabit of data per second, that is a lot, and that is what Elon Musk said that his SpaceX Starlink will be able to do eventually. That was his lofty ideas, I guess. Will we get there? I don't know. Can the unit actually do it? I think the answer is yes. The problem is how much network resources are available. And the same thing holds true here with Project Keeper. Yes, the unit might be able to do X, Y, or Z, but it might not be able to if it's oversaturated. I'll get into that before the end of this video. The article continues with, quote, the goal of Project Keeper is not just to connect unserved or underserved communities, but also to delight them with quality, reliability, and value of their service, said Project Keeper's VP of Technology. He continues by saying, from day one, every technology and business decisions we have made has centered around what will deliver the best experience for different customers around the world, and our range of customer terminals reflect those choices. Well, they have that little mini they have the mid-size and then they have the mega gigantor. So I guess he's right. I mean, it makes sense. Now the article continues with something that's very important here. Very important. Amazon has yet to launch any satellites into LEO for Project Keeper, with the first two prototype satellites scheduled for launch early 2023, on board a United Launch Alliance Falcon Sentry rocket, according to the company. Last month, Project Keeper received FCC approval to deploy over 3,000 satellites, which includes the stipulation that Amazon must retire satellites in the fleet at the end of their seven-year launch long missions. So after seven years, even if the satellite is still viable, they have to deorbit it, bring it into the atmosphere and allow it to just burn up. Very interesting why that is. I guess they don't want like a whole bunch of floating debris that no longer has the energy to deorbit itself. And now we have to have a cleanup on aisle six, a whole crew going up there and cleaning up old junk. Anyways, I digress. As a whole, Project Keeper is currently looking to launch these satellites across the schedule of 83 launches over the next five years. In April, Amazon signed an agreement with Arian Space, Blue Origin, and United Launch Alliance to meet that goal. These agreements conveniently left out SpaceX, one of the main competitors of Project Keeper. Now, if you didn't know, Blue Origin is actually owned by Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon. So, of course, he's going to be in the mix as one of them that will be launching these satellites into orbit. But 
Just a few months later, Amazon changed its tune and the senior VP President Dave Limp voiced the potential that Amazon may coordinate with SpaceX on launches in order to meet the lofty timeline. Amazon has stated publicly that it expects to spend $10 billion on implementing Project Keeper. The agreement to secure 92 satellite launches from three different providers is the biggest commercial procurement ever. Makes sense. That is a lot. And spending $10 billion is a lot of money. But Jeff Bezos has it, right? So if he wants to directly compete with Elon Musk, he can. But how will it all turn out? Just like they're stating here in this article, they're currently vaporware, right? They do not exist. They are not in orbit as of yet. So there is images of these antennas that will be used, but there's no satellites to connect to these antennas. So does it really matter? Yes, it gives us an idea that this will be coming, but we're looking at these satellites getting up there within the next five years. Where will Elon Musk be? Elon Musk is currently SpaceX Starlink at about 3,500 satellites, right around there, let's call it. Project Keeper is looking at about 3,200 satellites over the course of five years. In five years, I can see Elon Musk having double or triple that, maybe close to nine or 10,000 satellites or even more. He's slated for about 43,000 satellites. And the FCC, I think, has approved him up to 7,500, 9,500, somewhere around there, more as of today. So he can basically launch all day long. So... As of today, Starlink is the only extraterrestrial internet provider worth even looking at, in my personal opinion. You have Viasat as well as HughesNet. Both of those, instead of LEO or low Earth orbiting satellites, they are in GEO or the geocentric or geostationary satellites. Now, those satellites are thousands and thousands and thousands kilometers higher or away from the Earth than the LEO satellites are. This is why you have this greater latency and the prices are very high and the reliability is very low. And this is the reason why many people are actually migrating away from HughesNet as well as Viasat. It is just simply not worth being with those companies when you have something like SpaceX Starlink, even though you have a waiting list with them as of right now. Many people, as I have recommended, have gone with best effort service. Even though they are on that waiting list for six months or a year, they can still get Starlink, but as a best effort. While you're not getting the full speed, you're getting about half speed, it's okay. You still remain on that waiting list to get full speed eventually. Now, Now, of course, like I said at the very beginning, there is 5G. That is an alternative to Starlink. If you're in a rural area and you can get 5G, fantastic. Take a look at Verizon Home Internet as well as T-Mobile Home Internet. The problem is, is the people that need high-speed internet access in rural environments, in rural areas, Most of them do not have access to 5G. 5G is located in the cities, not in the rural areas. So if you're in a rural area, you're not going to see 5G. You're going to get LTE or 4G. And if you do get 5G, it's going to be slow as hell. The other problem is with companies like T-Mobile. Even if they tell you that they're giving you 5G, I have tested this in rural areas as well as in the middle of a city actually three cities. And even though T-Mobile says that they have 5G, which they do, it is not what I would consider to be fast. The reason being is if you go even into the city and try T-Mobile 5G, you'll see the download speed is 50, 100, sometimes 200 megabits down. You're like, wow, this thing is awesome. Right. Then you go and try doing an upload speed and you're looking at it. You're like, what the hell is this? Less than one megabit, sometimes two megabits, sometimes three megabits. If you're lucky, that is not broadband. That is not 5G. I have family members that get 5G in Europe and that is like. 400 meg up, 400 meg down, five, 600 meg up, 600 meg down, crazy speeds. The slowest I've seen over in Europe is like 50 to 75 megabits up. And over here, we're getting three, four, 
most of the time, less than one megabit up, that is completely useless if you want to use it for business or if you're having a conference call or a meeting or a Zoom or whatever. It's absolutely impossible to do because your upload speed would make you literally look like a Minecraft character, all pixelated, right? You can't use that. So once again, the only service that's currently available, in my personal opinion, to even look at as of today is SpaceX Starlink. That's it. Sadly, that is the case. So there's going to be people that say, oh, you know, have you taken a look at Nomad? Have you taken a look at all the rest of stuff? The majority of those things run off 4G, LTE, or 5G. And if you do not have access in rural areas, you'd have nothing, right? So now there is ways around this. And I'm probably going to do a video about a couple of ways sometime soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks, because I got something in that will kind of fix this a little bit. And you could use 5G, even if you can't get it on your phone, but that's for another video. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, click this button, all of those things. If you want to say thank you, there's a thank you button. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.